Hey guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist here on YouTube, and today I'm going to be talking about why I don't take classical music as seriously as many others do. I have not taken classical music very seriously at all from the beginning of this channel, and to be honest, it was because I was trying to get away from the seriousness of music school. At the time that I started this channel, I was in the third year of music school. Classical music was pretty much life or death for me. It definitely wasn't, but um, it felt that way because it was my life. All of my grades depended on it. And when you're in school, you feel like your grades kind of predict your future. In any case, this channel was basically my first venture into not taking my career, which is classical music, too seriously. I just wanted some relief. I think I have shown you guys these two books that I bought on a whim. The first book is The Complete Idiot's Guide to Music Theory. I also have this book, which is Classical Music for Dummies. When I saw these books, I laughed because I love the fact that these companies came out with these books. But the other thing that it made me realize was that I'm not actually special for having gone to music school to learn these things. As you can see, anyone can pick up these books or similar books and learn it themselves. It made me realize that music textbooks are not exclusive to music students. I have other textbooks behind me that I have shown in another video. I'll leave a link up here for those of you who are interested in those textbooks. You can totally just order it yourself. It made me realize that by extension, classical music itself is not really anything special either. It, it's just another form of music that you can learn. When you really get down to it, pop music and classical music shares the same history, and they also share the same music theory. The really interesting pop music out there utilizes a lot of really crazy music theory concepts. These help me not get too full of myself. Shortly after I bought these books, I started to get into looking at children's books for classical music. It was just an extension of this idea that classical music is actually 100% accessible to everyone, including children. I did make another video about those books, and I will link it up here for you guys if you're interested in that as well. And then one day, I saw Victor Borga on TV. There was like a special on him on like PBS or something like that. He lived from 1909 to 2000. He was Danish American. He was actually a child piano prodigy. So as you can imagine, he did the whole touring around and playing very classical, very proper performances, but he very soon fell into becoming a comedian. He became a comedian quite early on in his professional career, I believe. And he ended up touring Europe telling anti-Nazi jokes at the start of World War II. He was pretty darn badass. He then escaped on, I believe, the last neutral ship out of Finland, where I believe he was like touring in, to travel to America, where he didn't speak a lick of English. So he learned English by watching movies. This guy was immensely intelligent. He ended up having his own show called The Victor Borga Show, where he did all his classical music comedy acts. Later on in his life, he actually appeared in the show What's My Line. My boyfriend actually showed me a couple episodes of this show because I hadn't actually seen it and I thought it was so amazing to find out that Victor Borga was actually on the show a couple of times. And on the more serious side of things, he actually founded the American Pianist Association with, I'm gonna read it, Julius Bloom and Anthony P. Hebig. So why did I like this guy? He was 200% okay with making fun of himself. There is one act that he did where he's doing a piano duet with another performer, and they do things like slip off the piano bench, they pretend to smash each other's fingers with the cover of the keyboard, you know, stuff like that. To me, this was amazing because prior to seeing Victor Borga on TV, it had never even occurred to me that you could be a successful classical musician and completely make fun of being a classical musician. Going to music school, I felt that I would be crucified for making fun of my craft because it wouldn't just be making fun of my craft, it would be making fun of the craft of 
all the other people studying music alongside me and also the professors who are teaching me. It was a pretty big taboo. If we did make fun of classical music, it was sort of hush-hush behind closed doors, giggling to yourselves, but it wasn't like put out on the stage. If he can make fun of his career, then so can I. I can make fun of the flute and I'm not going to die. In his routines, you can see him systematically ripping down the kind of pretentiousness of classical music. My favorite one is the one where he's talking about a Salieri opera. He makes fun of the singers. He makes fun of the types of singers who would sing those parts. He makes fun of the conductor. He makes fun of people coming in wrong on their parts in the orchestra. So he's not just making fun of like the big stars on the stage. He's also making fun of the pit orchestra. I have played in a few operas while I was in school. Everything he says is so accurate. Obviously, he very much paid attention to his audiences. He very much paid attention to growing his business, which he did really, really well. In terms of taking his career seriously, I guess you could say he did, but at the same time, he was not afraid to make fun of it and of himself. Keep in mind that I saw Victor Borga at around the same time that I was really getting into YouTube. This was the point where I was like, oh my gosh, I love all these YouTubers who are like super real and super genuine and we've never been in an age before where people have been this genuine and this real. But when I saw Victor Borga, that's when I realized that that was actually really wrong. It was just that I hadn't been exposed to people who were that real and that genuine in the entertainment world yet. Victor Borga, like seriously, if he was a YouTuber today, he would be such a hit. Even now, his videos on YouTube do really well. Like people have uploaded his comedy acts onto YouTube. So just search up Victor Borga here on YouTube. You'll find like all his stuff. When I first got onto YouTube, I was a lurker. So I was always trying to find a classical music YouTuber that I could relate to. And ironically, I found him, but not on YouTube. I found him on PBS. <laughs> that was really weird for me to find out that we actually do have a legacy of very real classical musicians who make fun of themselves. I then discovered, after a few more years, another person who was just as real as Victor Borga and made fun of her career just as much. Her name is Anna Russell, and if you have heard of her, it may be because of her very famous comedy act on The Ring Cycle by Wagner. Basically, she summarizes the entire Ring Cycle opera in 20 minutes. Now, if you're not familiar with what the Ring Cycle is, let me tell you. The Ring Cycle typically takes, I'm not joking, 15 to 17 hours to perform. It's actually made up of four operas. Think of it like Lord of the Rings, marathon. Like if you're to marathon the extended version of the Lord of the Rings, like you know how because there's like three movies in the one trilogy. Well, this is like four operas in the one big opera. The last opera out of these four operas lasts five and a half hours. It's an all day event. Okay. When I was just kind of double checking my information about the ring cycle, just to make sure that I give you guys as accurate information as I can. I don't always put out accurate information. I completely understand. I am a human. So I always really appreciate it when you guys put in corrections in the comments below. Thank you for that. But anyway, while I was looking this up, I found a really amazing German word. You know what? We're going to put it into Google Translate. Google Translate. Let's see how this sounds. Fünfstündigen Opernaufführung sang. Fünfstündigen Opernaufführung sang. Fünfstündigen Opernaufführung sang. Fünfstündigen Opernaufführung sang. That's the best that I can make it. Literally on Google Translate, it translates to five hour opera performance performing angst. Basically, the fear of five hour operas. I think this is officially my favorite German word ever. What about Anna Russell's rendition of this? It is the most amazingly funny thing in the world. She points out everything ridiculous about the opera. So anything about the characters, anything about how they sing, what they sing about. She just points out how ridiculous it is and how ridiculous it is that everyone takes the ring cycle so seriously. I had studied 
the ring cycle while I was in university. Absolutely. I had exams on it and I had to identify light motifs and stuff like that from the opera. But in terms of actually remembering the story and what happened and even what the light motifs sounded like, it didn't actually really stick in my head in university. But it was when I saw her do the ring cycle in 22 minutes. I think I saw it when I was in my masters. It was after that that I realized that now I actually remember what the ring cycle story is. You know how like it's the funny parts of lectures and seminars and whatever, or sermons if you go to church. It's the funny parts that you remember, right? And she made the entire ring cycle really funny. What she basically was doing was what is now termed edutainment. I'm not exactly sure who coined the term edutainment. The first person I heard it from was Daniel Howell, previously known as Dan is not on fire, but he does not go by that anymore. His channel has evolved so i will respect that i am a huge daniel howell fan amazing phil fan i'm all about that fan life edutainment is when you combine entertainment and education hence edutainment so i thought this was amazing that i had found this person who was employing the techniques of edutainment basically way before the term was really well known so now you guys are probably wanting some fun facts about anna russell so here you go she lived in the exact same era as victor borga so 1911 to 2006 they were like exact contemporaries of each other she was an english canadian singer and comedian and here's the really interesting part about her which I really relate to is that she had a couple of very notable fails in her career that she highlighted in her comedy acts. She apparently mentioned that when she was doing her graduation recital at the Royal College of Music in London, England, which is actually the exact same university that my best friend Carrie did her masters in bassoon performance, her judges interrupted her and basically implied that her singing was a joke. Mm. So a lot of people don't actually know if that's a true story or not. I have been through similar things. So at the very least, I don't think it's too far from the truth. Oh, and here's a really good one. Apparently, she appeared as a substitute Santuza in Cavalleria Rusticana, like it's an opera, where she quote, clumsily tripped on a set piece and pulled it down. Mm. So you can imagine how her colleagues looked at her. Oh, the shame she must have felt that just, mm. she toured around everywhere, had huge audiences. Like it's very obvious that she really, like Victor Borga, paid attention to her audiences. She was real with them. She connected with them, you know, and she cared about them. She really cared about showing the real side of what makes up a classical music career. And she also wasn't afraid of making fun of it. Sure, I have a master's in flute performance, which means that, you know, if you were to compare me to other people who came out of master's in flute performances, I'm just gonna be really real here. I'm kind of like in the middle, okay? Like I'm not the best, most amazing. I'm not really bad either. I'm okay. Seeing her being okay in her okayness and making a huge successful career out of it because she's just real about it and she doesn't try to hide it. It made me feel like my YouTube channel is not as crazy as I thought it was. Like it's not as new as I thought it was. Like my YouTube channel has a legacy in these two people, Victor Borga and Anna Russell, in being real about classical music and making fun of classical music, just not being too serious about it. So of course, I also think that Anna Russell would make an amazing YouTuber today. It pains me because she passed away in 2006. That was when YouTube was born. Right now, there are classical musicians who make fun of being a classical musician. So if you guys haven't heard of Agudisman and Jew, you should go look them up. They're amazing. If you haven't heard of Two Set Violin, go look them up. They're also amazing. There are definitely people out there who make fun of being a classical musician now and are very, very successful because of it. I really believe that our legacy is in people like Anna Russell and Victor Borga. Like these people really paved the way for us. I feel like they make up a huge part of classical music history that 
isn't talked about enough. Now I want you to look up Victor Borga and Anna Russell, watch a couple of their videos, and then comment below with what you think of them. And also, if you know any other classical music comedians that we didn't talk about in this video, please put it in the comment section below. And as usual, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. A couple of you guys have told me that you've hit the bell, even though I've never formally told you guys to do that. So here I am saying it officially now. If you want to get the notifications, make sure you hit that bell. If you want to see my last video, it is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media networks are down there. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye. I played with the manual settings like crazy. I should have done that when I first moved in here like six months ago now. <laughs> but yeah, do you guys like it? Do you guys like the new setting? It's very fitting for cloudy Seattle, right?